Hi, and thanks for joining me. Today's ramble takes us round some areas in Yorkshire that I tried to include on the winter runs, but due to flooding and other things, it just didn't work out. So we're trying again to fill in some other gaps. The weather seems to be picking up now and it's getting a bit warmer and drier, so we should be okay this time. Anyway, We'll give it a go and see what happens. We're out on Goldie, the BSA Gold Star today. Uh, it's been a while because she's been tucked up in the garage since Harold the Himalayan arrived in October. <laughs> uh, now, he's been a great winter bike, but it's now the beginning of March and officially spring, so Goldie's back out to play. We're starting this ramble at Rawcliffe. Now, I've been through here on several previous videos, but there's a little bit of history in the village that I've overlooked on previous visits. Ah, can't go up there, it's a no entry. Uh, so we'll go right round the church and village green and come at it from the other way. While we're going round, uh, we get a good look at the church. It's St James and it's relatively modern, dating from 1842, but no less impressive for its lack of age. Uh, it is Grade 2 listed. What we're having a look at uh, is this water pump on the corner of the green. It's pretty impressive looking and at first glance uh, you probably assume it's the old village pump but again it isn't particularly old. It was actually erected to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria in 1897 and it's called the Jubilee Pump. We've travelled up through Airmin and we're just about to cross over the River Ouse at the Booth Ferry Bridge. And I always think this is a, an impressive structure so I keep showing it. I covered Howden in a previous video so I've skipped it this time uh, and we're heading out of Howden now. This is North Howden station and both the station building on the left and the signal box on the right are grade 2 listed. The station buildings date from 1840 and it was built for the Hull and Selby Railway. The signal box came a little bit later in 1873 uh, and by this time it was the North Eastern Railway. On our left is the eastern end of Breton Aerodrome. Today this is used for light aircraft but during the war it was RAF Breton. It opened in 1942 and the first ones based here were the Royal Australian Air Force flying Lancaster and Wellington bombers. In the early 1960s uh, it had three nuclear armed Thor missiles based here and it closed in 1964 and later passed into private ownership. We're turning left now towards York, still on the B1228.
Sutton upon Derwent now. Now, last time we came through here, I turned off right just here to go up to Newton upon Derwent. Uh, but this time we're carrying on towards Elvington. That's the Church of St Michael and All Angels. Uh, like most old buildings, it's been altered over the years, but the earliest part dates from the 12th century. Um, there's even thought to be some reused Roman bricks in the construction. Uh, this is actually a Grade 1 listed building. We're going over Sutton Bridge now that takes us over the River Derwent. This was built in the late 17th century uh, and the bridge itself is Grade 2 listed. We're in Elvington now and just on the left is Elvington Hall uh, that has Elizabethan origins. The village is pretty old and it's mentioned in the Doomsday Book. It's a pretty little place but it does hold uh, a dark secret. In 2009 a body was discovered by a fisherman in the canal at the village of Burn a few miles away. We pass through Burn later in the ramble. It was the body of Chen Kai Guan, a Chinese national, and investigations uncovered a gruesome story of how he died. He was tortured and beaten to death by two men in a warehouse on an industrial state in Elvington. His murderers were also Chinese and were linked to a Hong Kong triad. The warehouse, which outwardly was a food storage business, was actually part of a, a nationwide cannabis producing operation. The two killers were later arrested and convicted of murder and given life sentences. Just outside the village we've got the Yorkshire Air Museum on what was RAF Elvington. The base opened in 1940 with just grass runways but it was rebuilt with concrete ones in 1942. Initially it was used by 77 Squadron flying medium and heavy bombers. They were involved in the Battle of the Ruhr and the bombing of Berlin and during their time here they actually lost over 500 aircrew. In 1944 they moved to RAF Full Sutton and were replaced by two French squadrons. This was the only airbase in the UK used by the Free French Forces and they were a leading part in the bombing of Germany. They moved out in 1945 to a base in liberated France. Between 1952 and 57, it was used by the United States Air Force and they built a new 3,000 metre runway uh, that was the longest in the north of England. It stayed under RAF ownership but used by several different branches until it finally closed in 1992. Today the Yorkshire Air Museum is based here and they've got a large collection of planes and equipment on show set in and around the old World War II buildings. That's about the largest plane in the collection parked over there. It's a Hanley Page Victor K2 uh, and it saw service in the Falklands War. Well worth a visit. Motorsports played a, a big part in its life since the early 1960s uh, and the long runway that's almost two miles long 
makes it perfect for speed records and quite a few have been set here. I'll just mention a couple of recent ones. In 2019 Guy Martin set a new record for a tractor averaging 135.191 miles an hour in a JCB Fast Track 2 and he actually peaked at 155.77 miles an hour. In 2023 Alan Milliard and Henry Cole set the record for two up on a road going motorcycle at 183.5 miles an hour. If you watch the uh, the motorcycle show, uh, Henry Cole's television presentation, uh, it was all featured on uh, various episodes of that. Uh, it was done on board Alan's hand-built V10 Viper, uh, and I saw this bike at Stafford last year. I must also mention Richard Hammond's high-speed crash in the vampire jet powered car uh, while they were filming Top Gear for television in 2006. He was travelling at 280 miles an hour at the time and suffered serious brain injuries. Thankfully he made a full recovery. Right, as I'm out on Goldie now, rather than Harold, uh, I'm taking the fast way down to the next place of interest uh, to cut out some of the villages I've covered in previous videos. So I'm off down the A64 to bypass York. I don't use dual carriageways much, so it makes a change to let Goldie stretch her legs. She's absolutely fine at 70 and just over 4,000 revs. Smooth and comfortable and feels like she'd just sit doing that all day. We're travelling south on the A19 and it's a, a busy day at Strawberry Fields. The spring weather brings all the bikers out. I'm not stopping for a brew today because I'm a bit short of time but uh, maybe next time. Ah the fish and chip shop's open again. Now you see plenty of mobile burger bars and stuff in laybys uh, but the one here on the A19's a proper fish and chip shop. It's the Happy Haddock and I've called in here a few times over the years. A great place. See what I did there. Eskrit now uh, and that's St Helen's Church. It built in 1857 and is Grade 2 listed. I'll pull in down here because there's another little monument to look at. Now we saw the Jubilee pump at Rawcliffe at the beginning of the trip. Well this is the Jubilee fountain. Once again it was erected in 1897 to commemorate Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. It's also known as the Dolphin Fountain for obvious reasons uh, and it's Grade 2 listed. 
Back off down the A19 a bit further now. We're turning off to the right onto the B1222 to head to Corwood. Just on the left here is the site of the old Eskrick railway station and the bridge over the line. There's nothing left now but it opened in 1871 and closed in 1953. The line finally closed in 1983. Now last time I tried this during the winter the road was closed at this point as the bridge at Corwood was closed due to flooding. Looks like we're okay today though. Here we are at Corwood. Made it finally. <laughs> From this side you enter the village over the old swing bridge over the River Ouse. It opened in 1872 and replaced the earlier ferry. It's a Grade 2 listed structure. We're turning left to take a look at Corwood Castle. This is another Grade 1 building, that's the second we've seen today. The original fortification was probably built in Saxon times by King Athelstan around the year 925. It was mentioned in records in 1181 and over the centuries it's been visited by many kings of England. Up to the English Reformation in the 16th century uh, it was one of the main residences for the Archbishops of York uh, and it was described as quite a spectacular place. In the English Civil War it started out as a, a royalist stronghold but had changed hands several times by the time it finished. After the war it was abandoned and destroyed. Today only the gatehouse and banqueting hall remain uh, and they're looked after by the Landmark Trust. Stone from the destroyed castle was used in building of local houses. The foundations and some other structures are still there and the castle's cellar which was excavated in the 19th century. The gatehouse operated as a, a courthouse till 1930s then used as an officer's mess and a building for the home guard in the Second World War. We're going back out of Corwood the way we came in so I can take in a, a few more villages before we get to Selby. Many of the old buildings survive in the village and as we ride out we see some on, on the narrow streets. Uh, there's actually 30 listed buildings here. The name Corwood comes from Ca, which was a hollow or field, and Wood, which is self-explanatory. It meant someone who lived in a wooded hollow or field, and it's from Anglo-Saxon origin. We're turning right up the back lane towards Rickall. Now we've still got a few interesting places to visit so this is going to be another longish ramble so I'm going to leave it here and we'll carry on the journey next time. Hope you found it interesting and enjoyed being out with Goldie again. Please leave a like if in fact you did and a comment and I always try and answer them. 
and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of my ramblings and hit the notification button. Hope to catch you on the next one. So, cheers for now.